Hi everybody and a big warm welcome to my painting channel. Today I'm going to get a little messy. I'm going to do a lovely abstract for you in three colours and an ink. So let's roll that intro and let's see how we get on. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I'm actually going to get quite messy today as I start throwing some paint around and some water around and doing another one of my abstracts for you guys to enjoy. Now, I really have a whole heap of fun doing these because you never quite know what's going to come out at the other end. You start putting the paint on, it moves around and it suggests things to you. And it's those suggestions that really, for me, dictate the final outcome of the painting. So I'm going to be using a couple of colors predominantly certainly Payne's grey and also some of the oranges and maybe some siennas something like that to do the main part but then I'm going to be using a couple of inks a couple of these so sepia type inks this is a De La Rowdy one and this is one from uh, Speed Dry I think which is magic color and they are sort of a brown sepia color inks and that's what I'm going to be using to complete this painting so join me and let's just see what happens take care catch you all at the other end and i just want to put a little bit of sky on here but i am going to be using a few colors now by that i mean i still going to put in my blues i'm not sure how this is going to go yet but i just wanted to create a bit of a sky and put a little bit of raw sienna into that and then I'm going to come down with a bit more blue through here and it's very very pale as you can see I think I can do better than that so as I said this is just a lark about I'm actually going to have some fun with the two colors that I've been using in the past I quite like that idea so let's just play around with two colors tonight. Turn the paper back the other way and see what happens with that. I want to collect that. I should have collected that up the side. Not a problem. Just let that run back down again and then we can take that off. It shouldn't cause any problem that way. let that just gently move down if you start using a hairdryer at this point you really are lost because it's going to arrest the movement of the paint it's going to stop doing all these wonderful things I don't think I'm going to do that it's going to play around a little bit more and do is flick a little bit of water now it's going to flick up in here if I'm not careful I don't want it to go everywhere I just want to flick a little bit of my fingers onto here.
And what I wanted was that light coming through there. I've partly achieved it. It's been at the cost of a little bit of this, but I don't think we've lost too much, really. Oh, that was a bit aggressive. Okay, so the painting has been dry. It's not totally dry. There's still some ripple, as you can see. There's still movement, potential movement. But let's just see by placing some of this on, just playing around with some of this. Now, this is a liquid charcoal. I love playing with this sort of stuff. I just want to see what's going to happen. It should, if I'm thinking correct, it, it should pick, you know, it should... Um, add a lot of um, a lot of granulation that's what I was trying to think of putting it on quite thickly trying to create a sense of something going on here I have to say using all this liquid charcoal is an awful lot of fun now it's not really until you start putting water to it and watch it granulate does it really get quite exciting and I'm using my spray bottle a lot as you can see and adding that much more pigment in the form of the charcoal and just making it move and see what happens. Now for me the star of the show it's the Rowney acrylic ink and this is the sepia version and I'm actually applying it with the lid or the stopper. Okay now I used a scrunched up piece of tissue paper and I started dabbing the damp or wet paint and what it did was created some wonderful effects not unlike doing a heavy salt application but it worked very very well and I enjoyed the organic marks that were left behind as a result of that so it's well worth having a go. Okay, at this point I decided to use a brush to apply the ink. I wanted much thicker quantities, much more directly applied so I could then use the water spray just to make it move along the page and get those organic growth of the, of the pigment itself. Okay, another change of brush. This time it's my lovely rigger. I find these brushes indispensable and they are great for those very direct, very thin lines that you want to do. In this case, we're putting some reeds in, some little seed heads to some of the long grasses that you would see in this sort of environment. And here we sort of come away from the abstract and we go a little bit towards the reality of a scene by putting something that we can actually identify in the form of uh, growth and grasses and that sort of thing. You'll see me working into the positive but I'm also going to work into the negative spaces. Positive into the sky so you can see the tops of the grasses. Negatively coming back into the darker areas where there may be some reflections and some deeper shadows. That's what I mean by negative spaces. Now for a bit more fun, I'm using a chopped up store card and I'm creating some light patches, scraping back through the paint to the white paper or at least the stained white paper. Be very careful, you can very easily damage the surface and when you do that, ink or paint will go into those recesses and into the fibers of the paper. However, that may just be what you want it to do because you can actually pick up the paint and use the edge of the store card and move and put paint in very thin lines, not unlike a rigger, to create more positive grasses and that going up into the sky. It's exactly what I'm doing right now.
can see me picking up little bits of paint with the edges and I'm redepositing it elsewhere in the painting, creating really striking marks with the edges of the store card. They are very, very useful little tools. So save them, don't throw them away. Okay, for the last little bit of fun, I'm going to actually add some table salt to the areas where the ink is. Now, the ink is not actually dry. It's still damp, so it should still react with the salt. And once that's done, you've got to actually leave that to dry thoroughly overnight. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Now, it is the next morning, and this has totally dried up overnight, and I've rubbed the salt off. One thing of note, now, this was an acrylic ink. This is the um, FW inks from Dale Rowney that I used and the ink didn't go into the salt as much as I thought it would do. Now, it has had some small or marginal effect on the painting itself where the salt was, but not as much as I had hoped. Now, watercolor will affect much easier and much, um, much more uh, noticeable, but as I say, the acrylic ink didn't do so well. Not a problem, there's still some there. But when I looked at this last night, I felt that I could do a little bit more. It was suggesting more to me, and I wanted to put a larger toe, as it were, back in reality. There is some form of reality in this. It's not completely abstracted, and it's not even a semi-abstract to that degree. But I felt by putting a little bit of a suggestion of dark line through here, I sort of put a division between these two areas and this could be the edge of water this suggested to me a reflection of this and I felt that by doing that adding that in and maybe a few birds as always I love my birds uh, in there coming through there will just finish this painting off so that's what I'm going to do and uh, and then we'll call it there I'll take the tape off and we can move on okay for this I am just going to go back in with the ink because I'm pretty sure that uh, acrylic will render the surface of the paper almost water resistant so no watercolor really is going to sit in there so I'm just going to literally draw with this bit of um, plastic in here just suggest nice sharp piece of wood from my extensive tool range <laughs> and I'm just going to scribble with this ink and I just want to put in a suggestion of sort of a, a river bank, a river edge, a ditch, whatever you want to call it. In fact, there, that lovely little shape there is suggesting that actually it goes back in here. Now we've just created something that is even got more depth to it and we can suggest our water now. And this ink, I'm just scratching around on the top here, through here. Just drawing one or two lines up in here. And this is just an afterthought. I really hadn't expected to do this extra work on this painting. I was going to leave it where it was. But the more I looked at it, the more I felt that, you know, we can we can do that. We can make this a little watery edge and this a sort of more distant bank like that. always say always try and randomly change the size but always have an odd number if you can I like birds sort of tend to take off in little flocks and then move across as the winds going sometimes you get the sense of that movement 
bigger. Almost like they're all taking off from down here somewhere. And I do this on all the paintings. I just find that it actually adds a nice um, interest from the real world, as it were, into a painting. I'm going to leave them to dry off. I think that's more than enough. We've got them going across from the centre here, emanating out this way. And we've got a nice little suggestion of water now. I quite like what that's doing. And I could just scratch a few extra bits down this way. Sort of more identifiable. Uh, like that part there. We can just sort of suggest that's coming around there. If you see something really strong, you can actually sort of replicate that as a shadow. Coming down, uh, reflection, not a shadow, sorry. Just bring that down. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to sign it in the ink there as well. Sorted. Okay, everybody, I had a lot of fun doing that, and I'm sure you got something from it as well. Now, the whole idea of doing an abstract for my own purposes is to enjoy the process and have a whole heap of fun getting messy and putting paint around ink and whatever process I choose, allowing the paint to develop and to see what it suggests to me so I can then come to a conclusion with the painting. That's exactly what I did in this video. And I also did it to show you that all you need to do is have fun. All you need to do is take off bits of paper, throw some paint around and use one or two processes and enjoy yourselves and see how it turns out at the end. And they don't all turn out well. I've got a bucket full at different times that really don't turn out that good. But at the same time, every so often, one really works well. And you appreciate it, you enjoy it, and others enjoy seeing it as well. So what I'm telling you, or what I'm suggesting to you guys, is to take all those spare bits of paper, use your inks, use your paint, and enjoy yourselves. And you when you let free like that, it, good things can happen. So without further ado, let me just say that if you've enjoyed this video so far, please give it a big, big thumbs up. That is fantastic. And the algorithms are always looking for people who interact with channels and support channels. So if you are a regular viewer, fantastic. Add comments. I love to read them. Share it with friends who may be watercolorists also might get something from my videos. And if you're not a subscriber, you know what I'm going to say. Please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon and the no notifications tab. I can always get that lot wrong. Um, and uh, it will tell you each and every time I put out a new video, which is always on a Friday at 3 p.m. So with that all said and done, um, there is something else. Yes, my Patreon. There is no reference for this week's video over on my Patreon. But why not check it out anyway? Because there are so many references for all the other videos that I put out on YouTube. You can download them for free. You do not need to be a patron to do that. But you can then put your results up on the uh, newly formed Painting with Paul Apps page over on Facebook. I love to see the results of people's work from my tutorials. That's always good to see. Now, whilst you're over on the Patreon, don't forget there is so much on offer over there. There are many tiers. They're all watercolor tiers bar a little one, which is for oil painters. But you've got so much on offer. There are over 128 full length, fully narrated videos to enjoy. There is a Patreon community on Facebook dedicated just for you guys. There is also a growing number of exclusive videos just for my patrons to enjoy. So why not check it out? And I'd love to welcome you as my latest patron. That would be awesome. And I just want to say a big, big, big thank you to all the patrons that I have right now. Each and every one of you, whether you've been with me from the start or just joined. Your support, your contribution to what 
I'm doing helps make me able to create videos week in, week out. And without it, it wouldn't really happen. So thank you so much, each and every one of you. You are very much valued and your kindness and support is, is always welcome. Thank you. And I am now rambling officially. So I'm going to close this off and say thanks for watching, everybody. Catch each and every one of you in next week's video. Take care. Have fun. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Everybody, welcome to this week's video and today I'm going to be doing a lovely little so let's crack on and let's see how it gets going start again then hi everybody and also I used a a, 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 a ink that one and that dictates really how the final outcome. No, that's always going to be the case, isn't it? <laughs> Everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I'm actually going to get quite messy today as I create a lovely um, uh, one of them things. So I'm actually going to be doing a no. I am. Well, I will be. If I ever get this tape done, outcome of the painting is as a, as a result. And I sort of came back to it the next morning and added a little bit to me, be, uh, to me, to it, it, not me, it. 